Good morning and welcome along to our weekly live stream from FM20 with Burnley. It's the Youth Academy Challenge and we're trying to get these wonder kids playing the right way. So fingers crossed we'll be able to do that today and we'll be able to get moving. But good morning, welcome along, thank you for popping in today, I do appreciate it and hopefully we've got a good live stream ahead of us. Lovely to have a couple of you waiting beforehand, I do appreciate that as well does give me a little bit of confidence knowing a couple of you are here and hopefully you'll enjoy this one today because we have got plenty to look forward to. It's a hectic Christmas period in the Premier League. We should have an FA Cup tie as well. We've got plenty going on and it's lovely to have you along as we try and get something positive out of this. So in we go. Let's have a look as we start with probably one of the hardest tests of the morning. We're going to be facing the mighty Chelsea away from home and they've had a poor start to the season. How, how are you guys doing this morning as well? Let me know how you guys are getting on. Hopefully you're doing well. And fingers crossed we can get some positive results. So we're starting with Chelsea away. It's going to be a difficult test. And we know that this is going to be the hardest of challenges. So it's Chelsea v Burnley, 8th v 11th. Both sides having a poorer season than last year. And we've got some stinkers coming up as well. We've got a double header against Liverpool. And the last game of the day should be away against Manchester City. So probably not the morning we were hoping for, but good morning anyway, welcome along, come and put a thumbs up on it, get involved in the chat, and let's get into the first game of the morning. Chelsea away, we've got a decent run of form to come up, but I imagine things are going to go wrong now. We won our last league game against Sheffield United, but we did lose against Rio Ave, which put us second in the group. So let's see how we get on today. Chelsea v Burnley, Chelsea heavy favourites. I'm not quite awake this morning, not quite stringing the sentences together perfectly, but we'll get there. Thank you for everyone who's joining along. I do appreciate your support as well. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already, as I talk you through the lineup for today's game. So we've still got the injury to Bonner at right back, which means Liam Garner will play again. And aside from that, it is probably what we'd name as our first 11 on paper. So we've got Summer Skill in goal, Garner and Ruthven the fullbacks with Flauhout and Simpson at centre half. Spartel and Xavier in the middle, Edmonds on the left, Vaughan further forward on the right as we've been trying recently, and Ashley Harrop behind Sunday Balogun. The likes of Lowry are back from injury, they're on the bench today, which does make it a little bit easier for us. So let's just see if we can get a result. I mean, it's going to be difficult for sure, but hopefully there's positives to come. So in we go, first match of the day, and we've got plenty to get excited about. It is Chelsea v Burnley, and it's going to be a difficult one. I'd imagine it's probably going to go quite badly today. So thank you for coming along as always. I do appreciate it, and I'm hoping there's some good news to come, because this looks like an absolute stinker on paper. Thank you for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Great to have you here this morning. Not the ideal time to get started, I know. 10am on a Tuesday. I always have to apologise, as it's a little bit slow going this morning for some reason. But I always have to apologise. Unfortunately, my only day off work. And unfortunately, the phone that I use for the live chat has decided to freeze at the moment. So we'll undo that and we'll get going as well. So if you can hear background noise, that's why. Oh, the, phone, the phone's going mad now. Do you want to hear my voicemail? We've got all sorts going on this morning. There is plenty of excitement. Craig Savage, FA Cup is back. Yes, it is. We're excited about that. I'm glad you are as well. It's something I've been waiting for for a while. And this week, I mean, it started last night and it's carrying on. There is plenty of excitement there. <clears throat> so good to have the FA Cup back. Hopefully, me and you will be able to get to a couple of games this month for the podcast. And we'll have plenty to look forward to in the FA Cup. Because what a competition it is to be involved in. But let's get going anyway. Chelsea v Burnley. Sunday Balogun up front. And a team that we recognise with Chelsea, of course. Plenty of familiar names. The side that we later on in the head coach series. In this universe, what would it be? Three or four years later that we ended up at Chelsea. And lots of those names already there. They were experienced when we got there. And of course, you'd imagine that they'd already be in that situation here. So we've got the likes of Zenek Gross. Fathy still there. Serrano. Jude Bellingham, who was sold just after we left. Christensen, Abdullah, Godfrey, Ortega. Kepa still in goal, Al Jahani and Mila on the bench, but a lot younger, and Liam Henderson there as well. So there is a little bit of excitement, but let's see how we get on. 
I'm aware a few people will be back to school and college and work and whatever today. So if you are, good luck to you. I hope your day goes all right. But let's get into the first game of the day. Chelsea v Burnley. And this is going to be a very difficult test. We know better than most the qualities of this Chelsea side. It's Flauhau up in the air who loses out from the corner. And has cleared the way to halfway to Mason Mount. And we know he's one of the originals. He's got quality. Switches to Serrano, who's electric quick. Beats his man easily. And thankfully for us, drags his shot wide. But that was a very good effort. And probably should have been 1-0 Chelsea. But yes, let me know, Craig, what FA Cup tie are you looking forward to the most? There's so many I'm looking forward to. Unfortunately, the one that was going to be live on the BBC tonight has been called off because of a COVID positive test. So I'm hoping they'll replace that with something else. It's probably a bit late notice. But if not, it would be great to have an FA Cup game on iPlayer tonight. As Mason Mount's got a free kick for Chelsea. Into the box. Abdullah's missed out. Serrano puts it in. And after all the dominance, we've conceded from, the do from just a comedy of errors from a set piece. And you can't afford to do that at this level. You really can't afford it. And that's where probably the negative is for me. But let's crack on. Half an hour gone. It's only 1-0. It's only 1-0, but we've got to stay out the relegation battle. We're 10 minutes to half time. It's Jack Vaughan who's taken a knock. Kepa plays it long downfield and finds Fathy. Fathy brings it forward in the centre foot circle. Comes forward towards the edge of the box, but it's a good slide in challenge. And Ruthven picks it up at left back. And he's going to look for his best man here, but it goes back to Summerskill. Into Simpson. Simpson to Bartle. Trying to go over the top. In the end, four short to Vaughan. Vaughan goes out again. And it's back inside to our own centre half. We're not pushing forward here. It's a bit frustrating as Bartle picks it up. Bartle finds Harrop. Harrop out to the right-hand side. Finds Vaughan who beats his man. Sliding challenge Ortega gets away with it. Such a shame to see really. And Simpson makes his own tackle. But it's only going to fall for Gross. On that left-hand side. Picks it up again. Beats his man into the box. Great delivery. Owen Edmonds heads it straight to him. Oh, it's a comedy of errors again. How many times are we going to see that this morning? Absolutely baffling. El Gaming, you're not the only one. I was scrambling around at about 10 to this morning. I went down to the shop at about half nine to get a drink and realised, oh, it's not Tuesday because the bank holiday falls everyone, doesn't it? But it's good to have you along. Do appreciate you joining in. As we've reached half time, 2-0 down and two of the most hilarious goals we've ever conceded. I'm aware there was a couple of internet issues in the first minute, so I think they've dried up now. Hopefully, that's the end of them. As I mentioned, after this, one more week to go, and then we're moving over from Virgin Media, so we shouldn't have any problems then. Uh, who said Wrexham in the playoffs? With their signings, I think we have a chance. Uh, so Craig's the man who said it. Whether he'll stick to that when he does his predictions for next month, I don't know. Um, but yeah, another good signing. Was it Adi Youssef you signed at the weekend, was it? Because he's a very good player. There was another one as well. Who was the second signing? Because I've forgotten the other one. As Garner picks it up to Bartle. To Harrod. To Bartle again. We've got one back. We've finally got a goal. Good start to the second half there. So yeah, who was the other Wrexham signing? I keep forgetting. But I definitely saw the striker. He's a good player. So I think there's going to be a good season for Wrexham. It looks like you're building a pretty good squad there, to be honest. I think the National League is probably going to be more competitive than ever. You've got Macclesfield coming down, who you'd imagine won't be able to compete at the top, unfortunately. But then you've still got Notts County in there. You've got Wrexham in there. Chesterfield had a poor year last year. There's a few clubs down there as Serrano scores at Summer Skills near post. Really poor goalkeeping. The goals we've conceded today are terrible. And Theo Vassell, that's the one I'm on about, yes. Theo Vassell was a good sign-in. There was another one as well. There's been quite a lot. Wrexham basically rebuilding their side. The only worry is when you sign so many players is then the fans turn against you because the first few games you expect to win. And obviously there is going to be crowds in the non-league games. I know very limited, but that is surely going to have an effect because you won't get the eight to ten games to build. I take the example of Luton. The year we went up, we scored 100 goals, got 100 points. But after nine games, we were 14th. And John still always said right off the first ten games and from there we'll be champions. As Zenit Gross is in, he's put that one wide. But this is becoming from decent to alarming because some of the goals we've conceded are poor and now we're conceding hundreds of chances. And I don't know what options we've got. Balogun looks anxious, so we'll bring on young Leon Lowry. I've accidentally put McNeil up front there. In midfield, we've got Jack Vaughan, who could be replaced, but I haven't really got an option. Harrod's got an assist and still been poor, so we'll bring on Nathan Mullen. And then we'll put Matas on in the middle. He can replace Vinicius Savio, sorry. So that's the changes we've made. I'm not quite sure who the best is on the ball out of the midfielders. 
think I might swap those two. Matas and Bartle. But 3-1, and it looks like damage limitation at this point. I'm not quite sure where the positives are here, to be brutally honest. It doesn't look good at all. But thank you everyone for coming along this morning. If you haven't yet, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. If you, have, if you are new along, please do come and get involved in the chat. And of course, it's great to have you here as always. There was another striker as well. I forgot his name. Thomas or something. See, that's the problem. You can't keep up with them, can you? Even as a fan, there's that many of them. We've lost 3-1. Wasn't a terrible performance. But either way, we're not going to get too hung up about that. Let me just go and take a quick sidetrack to go and have a look at Wrexham signings. Because there's a name that I'm definitely missing. Let's see if we can find someone. So Elliot Durrell we talked about last week. Reese Hall Johnson we talked about. Have we talked about Jamie Reckford yet? Theo Vassell, he's another one that's come in. There's a few more down there. Let me just go down the list. Uh, Bobby Grant from Oldham, his loans for next year. Adi Youssef from Blackpool up front. Quain Thomas, that was the other one. Yeah, so you did say Thomas. So the two strikers together, Youssef and Thomas. If you can get those two playing together and fit in an effective 4-4-2, which based on the wingers and fullbacks you're signing, I wouldn't write that off. You could be in an exceptional position next season, honestly, because those two up front, Playing well with good service could get you 30, 40 goals between them. And that's what you need at that level. So I'd be excited if I was a Wrexham fan. The only thing that's a slight issue for me is no real improvement at centre-half or centre-mid. So I think that's probably the only area. Even if you just get one leader in to improve the spine of the team. But otherwise, yeah, I think you've got a really good side and a good chance next year. Well, Luton, we're just waiting. James Bree's been talked about as a record signing. We had him on loan last year. It looks like Mourinho fancies Cameron, Car fancies Cameron Carter Vickers sorry, at Spurs. So, unfortunately, we definitely won't get him back unless he makes a late decision to loan him. But Tottenham's, Tottenham's transfer window is interesting as well. That's the other one I was going to talk about because you talk about clubs going for the big players. Tottenham have done the opposite. They've sort of picked some cherries from some of the other clubs in the league. So, Hoiberg, obviously one of Southampton's best players up until the lockdown. You've got Matt Doherty, who was uh, Matt Doherty, sorry, who was brilliant at Wolves, and they're looking at a few others now as well, which I'm really interested in. That um, hopefully he plays the formation he tends to a four-three-three. Dean Keats or most recent back under Dean Keats or most recent a back five. So a back five could work because you can play the two strikers still, can't you? And looking at the likes of the only thing I would say is why would you sign Vassell, Durrell, uh, Reese Hall, Johnson if you're then only going to play one wide man? So, I can't see him only playing one, but then if you sign Yusuf and Thomas and don't start them both, I don't know. 4-4-2, as you mentioned, it seems to be out of fashion now, doesn't it? No one wants to play it. We've got the draw for the Europa League knockout draw. We really need some luck here. I'm not sure we're going to get it. Astana out first. We'll take them. They've drawn the Italians. And then it's Hibernian v Olympia. Sporting Lisbon v Bromby. Copenhagen v Osijek. Lille, we'd love to avoid. They've got Michelin. I'm just looking at the rest of the draw. If we can avoid Spartak Moscow, I'd probably be quite happy. Red Star aren't great to bait either. So Spartak Moscow are out. So we could get Hajik Split, Lech Poznan or Red Star. We're going to Eastern Europe in the second leg, whatever it is. We've got a home tie first and it is Red Star. So let's go and have a look at their side. The Serbians, pretty good team. Zeric is their star player. He's worth 1.4 million. Oh, wow. He's a wonder kid. If only we'd spotted him two years earlier. He might be the best young centre-half in the world. And what I'm asking now is when we were at Chelsea and Barcelona in the head coach, why on earth did no one spot that kid? What a player he is. That's one of the best young centre-halves I've ever seen. Let's have a look at the best rated players in terms of value. So we've got Rafael Pereira. He's 29. Good, solid player. This might be a tougher test than we think, actually. Red Star, not the best game we could have got because I think they're doing all right there. Um, I thought Theo was centre-back. I think he could play centre and right, but yeah. Um, yeah, Tottenham, Joe Hart, another one. Good point. Uh, Red Star, weren't they in the Liverpool Champions League group the other year? You might be right about that. The thing is, in this, I don't know if you've noticed it in FM, is Serbia and Croatia. I know Croatia obviously produced brilliant players and get to the World Cup final in real life. But those two nations produce tons of quality players. I mean, if you look at the Dorking save we've had, on the left wing we've had Ilya Balic from Serbia. 
We've had Stokic, who I think is Serbian as well. We've had a Croat in the middle here in terms of Matas. Bartol from the Czech Republic, another one you could include there. The nations that seem to produce quality consistently. And the problem is here, normally in real life, they're snapped up at 18 and they go abroad. But here they stay until sort of 19, 20, 21. Tim Preek is another one, Premier League quality. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in FM. <coughs> so yeah, I'm not quite sure what to make of that tie. It might be a difficult one. We've obviously got the return of the, the EFL fixtures this week with the Carabao Cup as well. We had a few games last weekend. So I'm really excited for that. And over on the podcast channel, we'll be chucking out some predictions later this week. We're kicking off the new season tomorrow with an interview. And then we've got predictions galore all the way through to the start of the season. I can't wait to get started. As much as we're going to be wrong this year. And it's going to be so hard to predict. Because normally, you've got the end of the window, basically. Or two or three weeks left. But here, it's barely started. So it's very hard to judge. Which teams are going to sign which players. You just don't know how to call it. So that's going to make things more difficult. But we'll get by either way. As we've got Wolves up next in the Premier League. They're 17th. Should be an easier game on paper. Thank you to the extras coming in this morning. Great to have so many of you along. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. If you're new along, don't be shy. Come and get involved in the chat. Anything football, music, food, sport. We've talked a bit of everything over the last month or two. And we're talking now about Luton Town who are losing players there. Fabio's out with a flu. We're going to send him home with the club doctor. Hopefully he won't pass it on to anyone. It's going to be a bit of a tricky Christmas, this. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. We've got some difficulties because we're missing players. We've not really gelled this year. We've not put together more than sort of two or three good games in a row. And it's made it really difficult. Uh, where do you think you'll predict Wrexham? I don't know yet. I really don't. Well, I mean, we are, to be fair, we are prioritising the EFL ones at the moment because obviously that starts next week and the National League due to start on the 3rd of October. Wrexham are one of nine teams I've got in my playoff picture. I've already decided who I think will be champions, but I've got nine teams that I've got to get down to six for the playoffs. So it will probably depend on signings the next couple of weeks. Pre-season, I'd like to see how some of them use the tactics, what formations they play. But yeah, I've definitely got them in and around that playoff picture based on the signing so far. But of course, other teams could pull, pull off some brilliant business as well. You could lose a superstar. You just don't know. Wow, we've had a massive spike in viewers. Thank you so much to everyone that's come in. Please chuck a thumbs up on it. Come and get involved in the chat. We're talking all things football. Ask about your club, my club, anyone's club. An exciting transfer window. Just let's not talk about Messi all morning because I know it's going to be a, a difficult one, but... It's getting a bit boring on Sky Sports News. There's been hundreds of other transfers every day and all they're talking about is Messi. Uh, Carl, good morning. Welcome along. Uh, yeah, the Vanarama National Leagues are due to start on the 3rd of October or whatever the first Saturday is at the moment because they're waiting for the... They haven't been given the government go-ahead for the higher amount of fans yet. So once they get that, that's why they were planning to start in October. And I think they're going to be involved in some of the pilot schemes already. I've seen something about Notts County, I'm sure. So, yeah, definitely the 3rd of October is the most likely. Uh, I think the FA Trophy starts before that. But it's just good to have non-league football back. We were looking to go to an FA Cup tie this week. But unfortunately, the only local one is on the night I'm working. So, can't go and watch one. But the second qualifying round, or the first qualifying round as it will be, we'll get down to. The preliminary, the first round, the second round, all within the next five weeks, I think. So, match day vlogs will be coming thick and fast. It's a shame, to be honest. I know the Macclesfield Stevenage situation. I didn't really have a preference on who went down, but to be able to go to Stevenage round the corner would have been convenient. As it is, Hitchin Town, Hemel Hempstead, St Albans, all the options. So I've got a few I can go to. But we're heading into the Wolves game in a minute, and we've lost Liam Garner with a hernia. And I think that means both right backs will be out, unless Bonner's made a miracle recovery. I'm not quite sure he's done it in time, though. We'll have the press conference in a minute as well. That's going to be a worry because they're probably going to talk about our poor form. And after this one, which on paper we should win if we're in form, we've then got two back-to-back -back games against Liverpool where we're unlikely to get a point. Um, in other news, lockdown here will be going by the time we're streaming next week. Next Monday is planned in, but I might have to work. So you might have one more week of dodgy air, but hopefully it is scheduled to be gone. Uh, Bonner is back to fitness. So in one day's time, 
I'm hoping he'll be able to play at least an hour or so. Because even Fabio, who he'd move out there normally, he's got the flu as well. Passing it on to everyone too. So Shane Kabicki's 19. If he was 18, we'd be signing him. But one day to go. Wolves at home. We've got Liverpool twice, Man City and an FA Cup tie this morning. So it's going to be a difficult morning. And Ruthven's been called up to the Australia squad. Oh, that means we're going to have a month or so without him. That is Asian Nations Cup from the 9th of January. So we'll be without Ruffin throughout the busy period. I've made the practice Discord server ready. Let me know when you want it. Well, on that subject, L Gaming, I think we might have a good timing for it because depending on today, which is one of the biggest ones on the channel, we've got our Barcelona episode from the head coach this afternoon. If we win that game, which is the Champions League final, that will be series over and we'll be starting a new one this Saturday. And that will be the final new one of FM20. We've mentioned it before. We're going to be heading to Northern Ireland. A couple of doubles there in the head coach in, the, in FM18 and 19. But I wanted to do it properly. I really love the football over there. It's entertaining. And I've recorded about half a season already. And I can tell you it will be entertaining. So hopefully we win today with Barcelona. And that will start this week. We've got Dorking Wanderers all week as well. So I think if we're starting a new one on Saturday, that would be a good time to go with it. I've just started a Newcastle Town save in the Everstick South. So I'd be interested to know over the next few weeks how that goes. Because I'm planning to start a one club series a little bit lower next year as well. So I'll be interested to see how difficult you find it. I did briefly try a tier 9 one this year with uh, Crawley Green, my most local side. Sort of a practice for a couple of years time. Uh, which I'm planning to do one on the channel. Um, I managed to get Titus Bramble in somehow. But apart from that, not much. And then Titus dropped a clanger in his first game. So he hasn't really changed. <laughs> but he's generally a brilliant defender. And just has one of those moments every now and then. Let's pick this line up for the second game. And then I'll get back down in the chat. Garner is not fit. What did the fitness test say about Callum Bonner? 75 minutes. I don't know that I've got anyone for the last 15 Fabio will probably have to come on. Other than that, I think we stick with the same 11, the same 18. Looks a good side to me. Let's see if we can get a good result. The first game in a while we're expected to win. So let's try and do it. Uh, L game, sorry I lagged out. Oh, sorry, I said we were providing that the head coach series ends today, which it may do if we win the Champions League final. We'll be starting a new series in Northern Ireland on Saturday. If all goes to plan. I've recorded a bit of that, so that would seem a good time for it to coincide. Let me know what you think, because you probably know more about Discord than me. But for me, that seems good timing, because we'll have a new series. The Macclesfield one's going brilliantly as well. So that would be the logical move for me. Um, do you think January on FM, you're going to make in any signings? Probably not, to be honest. Don't forget, we've still got the three that we ideally need to get rid of, which are Flauhout, Vinicius Savier and Balogun. The problem is at the moment we're getting drawn towards relegation and we haven't really got backup options. Fabio keeps getting injured and playing poorly. Bonner's headed one off the line now. We're getting battered by Wolves now. Vinicius Xavier could go because we've got Matas and Bartle who are good. We've got uh, Richards behind him. He's good. And up front, I guess Leon Lowry's not bad, but he's had some knocks this year as well. Praganka in the middle for Wolves. Oh, desperate sliding challenge. Not good. Inside to Braganka. Long ball over the top. It's going to be 1-0. Catrone's in. Back to Mooney. And there it is. We just cannot get results at the moment. And I fear we might get sacked soon. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, Carl, top of the league with nine loans. Has only have a budget of 1k a week. Yeah, that's the thing. When I was with Crawley, it was a bit lower down. I think the budget was about 550. Might have even been lower than that. Got Darren Kasky as assistant manager. £50 a week plus unlimited pies. <laughs> That's the main thing, actually, at lower leagues. And I'll always say it. I've said it with all of the one club stories we did. Torquay last year, Dorking. Is having good coaches is the most important first step. As Flauhout heads in, that's a brilliant header. Looped it over the keeper from Balogun's cross. And there you see the problem if we let both of those go. But definitely, coaching team's always the best. I'll always spend that money first because that can improve any player. And at that sort of level, there's not much between them. Uh, yeah, seems pretty good. Do you need a practice one then or not? Because I'll delete it. It's no problem up to you. Uh, yeah, I think we'll need the practice one because 
in truth, I have limited idea of how to use it. So we'll have a go. We have two minutes of stoppage time and we're one all at half time. Doesn't look great, actually. We've not played badly, but the chances aren't being converted into highlights and goals. Uh, I started a new Wrexham save against my mate. He's Hartlepool. See, I always love that. The sort of, is it a network save? Like we did with the Barnet and Chesterfield, me and Craig, because that was really enjoyable. And if I hadn't have bottled it on the promotion playoff final, we would have had a second year of that. It's only because I lost on penalties that we uh, managed to miss out on that. And we were looking forward to it as well. I'd signed some cracking players for the summer. But it wasn't to be, and Craig was the, the star of that show. We've had an hour on the clock. Jack Vaughan looks knackered. He's not playing well either. So we'll bring Lowry on as an inside forward. He can go on attack. Parrot can be replaced by Nathan Mullen. And Bartle with Matas, which means that Bonnet will have to play 90 minutes. We'll go attacking a bit later if we need to. We'll wait and see. Yeah, network saves are always the best. Uh, all right, where do you want me to send it to? And I'll do it after. Um, yeah, any of the comments or whatever, I can catch up with it. Um, Twitter, doesn't matter. I'll find a way around it. <laughs> I've got the afternoon off, thankfully, so I'll just be editing. So I should be able to have a little look. As I think we have taken the lead. Owen Edmonds gets there. Finally, we've got a bit of form. And we need to win this game because we're not going to win the Liverpool ones. We have to get a result. If we don't win this, we'll be in relegation form by the new year. As Balogun picks it up in the middle. Back to Flauhout. All the way back to the keeper. Little bit tentative there. Out to Simpson. He's got the right back with him. Out to Leon Lowry. He's got a chance to take him on. It's a heavy touch. Bonner gets there though. Does well to Mullen. To Matas. To Vinicius Xavier. Back to Mullen again. Vinicius Xavier again. We're keeping it well this time. Edmonds. There's a man over on the left. Out to Ruthven. We're not really going anywhere at the moment though. Just passing it around. And we don't seem to have that cutting edge. But there it is to Edmonds. Brought down. I think that was outside the box. Definitely free kick rather than penalty. Pretty sure of that. As Balogun will step up. This is the chance. Keep the goal run going and get us the three points wrapped up. Sunday Balogun. Oh, it's straight at the keeper. I thought it had gone in still. And in the rebound, he's just put out for a goal kick. It's not happening at the moment, is it? I know we're winning this game, but the confidence isn't really there. Craig, what's the best kit you've seen this summer? He's asking that question to rile me up because he knows that this morning in the podcast chat, all we've been doing is moaning about nearly every new kit that's come out. The Port Vale one with the Robbie Williams design as Owen Edmonds has scored a screamer and that should be the game wrapped up. The New England kit, which is basically a plain bit of white fabric for 70, 80 quid. Liverpool's away kit's great, El Gaming, yes. Price isn't good. I love the loot and away kit. If you haven't seen it yet, they've changed to one, bro. And it's just, it's sort of training-esque, but it's a really nice looking kit. And that's probably the first loot and one I've been tempted to get in a few years. I'm not really a kits man. So I'd say that one because it's tempted me into buying a kit. As he's headed away. Edmonds is on a hat trick, don't forget here. It's a shame we didn't put him up to take the penalty. Far. Good to be bold, isn't it? Good to be bold. We have five minutes to go. We still lead 3-1. Looking good at the moment. And I'm hoping we'll be able to continue on that front. Because at the moment, we're doing all right in this game. We've played quite well. And Balogun's in. Can he make it four? After the re missed penalty, he's managed to put that one in. And that will finally get us a bit of confidence. Uh, Wrexham's awake. It is not nice. I'll have a little look at that after the stream then. Watford's home kit is the worst I've seen so far. Craig, I know as a Luton fan, you're biased there. Um, it isn't a good kit. But I don't know if it's quite the worst I've seen. As Elliot Volley's just over for Burn uh, for Wolves, sorry. But I think we are going to nick this 4-1. Simpson Mount of Flauhout. Out to the left side. Oh, he goes long instead. Finds Leon Lowry. We'd like him to get a goal. That would be the icing on the cake. But he's been challenged. Still keeps possession somehow. Played advantage from the referee. Lowry from distance. Just over the bar. Good effort indeed. But not happening so far. Bournemouth's home kit is nice. I haven't seen that one either, I don't think. Sorry, excuse me. I don't think I've seen their home kit. Thank you to everyone joining along. Good to see more of you popping in. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, come and have a chat down below. And of course, if you are a regular, come and get involved. Bonner gets it back to the keeper's summer skill. 30 seconds of stoppage time to go. Any EFL teams fans in? 
Just 10 more days to go. Obviously, the Carabao Cup's kicking off this weekend. Apart from the few side who had to play last week. We've got Norwich in the first round. A really difficult tie, but they've got half the team on international duty. We've only got our keeper missing. As Edmonds picks it up, out to Ruthven, the left back. And the final whistle goes. Strange highlight to see, but it's a 4-1 win. And thankfully, back in some form. Good timing as well, because we've got Liverpool twice in two days. Uh, Craig, Arsenal's away as Raspberry Swell. Uh, yeah, I quite like Arsenal's away kit, though. Seems to have a very mixed reaction. But all of the kits are going for patterns these days, aren't they? Because people have found out that for 70 quid, they don't just want a plain piece of fabric. But some of those can look the best. Particularly for us old school fans. Uh, City's away kit last year looked like ice cream. Uh, Wrexham's kit is nice, very simple. I'll have to go and have a little look at it. Let me go and have a look at Wrexham's kits. Give you a proper comment then. Uh, let's get to the Wrexham online shop. I presume they will be up to date. Is the away kit the green one? Can you confirm for me? Because if so, that is very nice. I like that kit. Quite like the home one as well, to be fair. Even the sponsor shoot suits the shirt, sorry. Yeah, the sponsor suits it. So, to be fair, that works well. We normally vote on Instagram, but this year they just released one. Well, I think that will prove the club know better than the fans sometimes. <laughs> As is often the case, unfortunately. As fans, we get a little bit um, carried away at times with certain things. So the next part of this is a double header against Liverpool. Away and home against the third place side. Ruffin will be on international duty, so we'll be without him. Vimmer's probably not fit enough to play the two games. And we're in 11th place going into them. So it's probably not going to be a good morning for us. I'm going to take some of the guys out of the under-23s because we might need them. Just seeing which ones. To be fair, out of that team, it looks like we won't need any of them. So in terms of the league, it is a little bit tighter now. We're six points off seventh. But you can see after the start, Leicester, West Ham and Stoke all doing well. City, Tottenham and Chelsea fighting for seventh. Um, with miles clear of relegation, I'm not that worried about that. But with Liverpool away to come, and then Liverpool at home to come, I can't see a positive light there. Uh, what about the Forest home QPR away? Let's go and have a look at them. Uh, Forest home kit is, yeah, that's nice. Just smooth, like that kit. And QPR away, you said, didn't you? QPR's away kit is... Let's have a look. 2021, I can't keep up to date with it. Where is it? 2021 kits revealed. There we go. QPR's kits are... Oh, sorry. I think I've been confused. The QPR away kit... Is the QPR away kit not almost identical to the Forest home kit? Am I going mad? Craig, am I going, am I going absolutely nuts? Forest home kit. They're exactly the same, aren't they? I've got to look at the home kit again for the 2021. They're almost identical. <laughs> Craig, you're trying to fool me with it. The Forest home kit and the QPR away kit are exactly the same shirt with a different badge on. Literally the same shirt. That says that is astounding. That's a great spot, by the way. But that is absolutely hilarious. Oh, Craig, we've got to make a podcast on that. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, check Bournemouth's out. Yeah, sorry, that's the one I missed, wasn't it? Bournemouth twenty one kit, home kit. You said, wasn't it? Bournemouth's home kit. Yeah, I like that. Love that all the publicity's with Nathan Ake in the middle. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not a bad kit actually. Not as plain as the others. I'm more of a traditional plain kit man. But yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, but but as a Luton fan, we're not allowed to like Bournemouth anymore. Because Graham Jones has gone there as coach. After leaving us. Not good at man management. Joining Jason Tindall, who was the nasty cop out of him and Eddie Howe. So there is a lot of pressure on Stephen Purchase to be the nice guy. Uh, Stoke looks decent for a change. Let me have a look at the Stoke one, Carl. I mean... I should just do a stream on this, shouldn't I? 
I'm sitting here trying to play Football Manager, and all we want to do is talk about kits. I should just be showing you that me switching between the, the Google searches. Uh, new 2021 kit. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yeah, I love that kit. That home kit's lovely. I'm not a fan of the away kit, Carl, to be honest. That home kit's beautiful, though. That's probably one of the best I've seen this morning. Stoke home kit, the winner for me. It probably, to be fair, it probably would have been the, the Forest home kit if it wasn't identical to the QPR away. But yeah, I really like that Stoke one. It's sort of the, the perfect mix between plain and modern for me. Uh, so I tell you what, El Gaming, over on the podcast channel, we'll stop doing all of our research for our predictions and that. We'll just do a kits episode. Just talk about kits. It seems to be the easiest thing. Put a kit up on the screen and give it a ranking. I mean, it seems to be working for so many. I'm wondering why we're not growing as quickly. It's because we're not talking about the kits. <laughs> Uh, who have you got for promotion? Which league, Craig? You're talking championship because I'm not revealing that yet. I'm saving that for next week. Um, I'm, I'll tell you what, with my automatic promotion for the championship, I've got four teams there and I'm going to wait till the weekend when we record it where hopefully there'll have been one or two signings for one of them. Yeah, I don't know which teams have got good kits in that. Normally, I quite like the sort of quarter shirts, like the Bristol Rovers, the Blackburns and that. But I haven't seen anything special from them this year. Not that I look out for kits, to be brutally honest. I just know that Robbie Williams was part of the vine in the Port Vale one. And as a result, that's going to go down as the worst kit. Thank you to everyone joining along. Good to see more of you here. Please chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. It's lovely to have you all along. Come and get involved in the football chat down below. Football Manager has become a bit of a byproduct to these streams. We just talk football, food, sport and anything else. US Open tennis started yesterday. The British player's doing well. I was watching a little bit of that. Got a free trial of Amazon Prime with an order, so that worked out nicely. As it stands, though, we're coming up to a pretty scary time. Merry Christmas in-game. Owen Edmonds, how much as longer has he got on his deal? Oh, 18 months. I thought it was going to be six. He's definitely going to sign. Leon Lowry injured again. His hamstrings, I don't know what they're made out of, but it's certainly not anything strong. As we come up to the two tough games. I'm a little bit worried about this spell, to be honest. And look who we've got after that. Bournemouth at home. So if nothing else, that will be interesting. In other news, the live stream today will be ending at 11.30 sharp. Because uh, in very simple terms, I'm making the most of my day off by getting my shopping delivered. So that's coming between 12 and 1, which was the cheapest slot. So no, no exciting reason. That will just be a slightly shortened stream. I think we should have a vote down below. Let me know what your favourite kit is out of the ones. Because I presume you've had a look at them all. For me, it's definitely Stokes home kit. Ruthven has gone on international duty. So Vimmer will be in for him. Bonner is still fit, which is good. But neither of them are going to be able to play both games. And that's what worries me. We haven't got any other fullbacks on the bench. Hmm. Who <laughs> on earth do you put on? I just don't know. We are going to put Andy May on the bench. Because Lowry's going to have to come off as well. I don't know who to put on defensively. No one can really play fullback. So let's just put Ross Marsh on. We'll get into the game. Same lineup aside from that. And hopefully positive news to come. I was going to drop Vaughan for Lowry today. Carl, my shopping's between 11 and 12. See, everyone makes the most of the shopping slots. It's part of the reason I had Tuesdays off works. The cheapest shopping slots of the week. We're going to have to do it. Next week, we'll do a supermarket vote. It will be featuring on the Food Channel later in the year. So we'll definitely have to do that. Craig, what about the Middlesbrough home kit? Let's have a look at that. Middlesbrough. Who have they got? Home kit for them. Uh, it keeps bringing me up the 1920. I presume it's the one there with Warnock. I'm not a big fan of that, Craig. I know it's a bit more retro, but I don't like that. The one thing I will give it, compared to last year, is it's the only 32 red kit that's got a set your limits under it. It's finally something to encourage... Uh, responsible gambling so yeah uh, Carl two quid bargain yet yeah, same here the two quid bargains always there and look at that Lowry's out injured today so Sunday Balligan gets injured in the second minute 
which means Andy May will be going up front, and he is not a Premier League striker. So this probably rules out our chance of getting a goal. Uh, yeah, Craig, I'm not a massive fan of the Middlesbrough one. It does remind me of one of the old kits. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. You know what? I don't know if any of you guys had it. When I was at school, we had the re reversible uh, like PE top. Now, ours was green and white, but it looks exactly like that. Proper retro feel and cheap feel, to be honest. Bartle gets it to Zavio. Xavier switches the play and is headed away. And we're going to be in big trouble here. Isik, a world-class player. Through to Griffiths, the 100 million man. In one-on-one, -on -one, summer skill saves. We're going to drop to balance because we are in big, big trouble here. And I might even drop the fullbacks as well. Save the fitness a little and hopefully spare our blushes. We'd like to keep this down as long as possible. As Arthur puts it into the box, headed away as far as Romano. He'll find Artur again. Obviously a star with Chelsea in our head coach series. 34 in this universe as well. And the ball's into the box. Flauhau heads away. Oh, it falls for Romano. That's a great strike. Can't do much about those. And unfortunately, we're behind early on, which doesn't bode well for the rest of it. Uh, nor am I. It's Hummel. That, see, I, I know you for the last month, Craig, all you've been doing is moaning about Hummel kits. Uh, it reminds me of Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank in 06. Can't remember that. That's the year they got to the final, wasn't it? Of the Europa League. Middlesbrough kit 2006. Let me jog my memory. Yeah, it's not too dissimilar. Slightly lighter shade of red on the old kit. That's always what I remember about the old Middlesbrough kits. Is them being really lighter red. But this time, much darker. But that team. What a team, by the way. Viduka. Hasselbank up front. Mendieta. Ray Parler. Pogatetz. Was he there by then? I think he was. Ah, oh, they had some cracking players. Downing coming through. Let's not mention Adam Johnson too much as that free kick goes flying in the top corner. We know Arter's ability and he scores again there. Was Fabio Rockenback still there then? Because he used to just, he was crap for three months and then just popped up with the most unbelievable screamer in the world. Really good player. That's when Middlesbrough and Bolton were just so brilliant then with the two top class ageing squads, should we say. And to be fair, that's Probably why Allardyce and McLaren got their respective England jobs. As Alexander-Arnold delivers Romano in for three, we are getting absolutely tanked now. And I don't really know how to stop the rot. We're in big trouble. We knew it wasn't going to be pretty, but this has gone from the ugly to the, to the nightmarish, to be brutally honest. I don't know how we get out of this. Xavier is going to be replaced. He's looking anxious. Matas on for him. Bartle switches roles. And I'm going to bring on McNeil for Vaughan, who's really struggling. He'll be an inside forward on attack. Might as well give it a go. Bit of experience on there might stop the rot as well. We're not really in relegation trouble, but results going against us is nine points away. If that happens again when we lose the home game, that'll be, what, six points potentially? Could be in a bit of trouble. Thank you to the extras coming on in. Do appreciate it. Please chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. It's great to have so many of you along this morning. As Brooks puts it through to Griffiths. Oh, just over the bar. It is so, so easy for Liverpool. And the fact we're playing them again in two days. They'll be able to rotate half the squad and still be world class. And we'll be putting in 18-year-old kids. It does worry me. Hell Gaming, good to have you back. Thanks for coming back in. It's good to have so many of you along this morning as we are getting absolutely tanked by Liverpool. Romano picks it up on the left-hand side. Chance to deliver from the byline. Into Coronel. Back to Alexander-Arnold. And Benson Core keeping it nicely. An ageing squad for this Liverpool team, but it's a very good one. As Alexander-Arnold back in again. Romano in. Bonner's tripped him. Oh, there was no need for it. What a silly, silly decision. And it's going to be a penalty for Romano. He's on a hat-trick and he scores it. Romano's goal, Bonner gets a yellow, he's had a poor game and he's not fit. And who's going to play right back in two days? I don't know the answer to that. How many more did you, kits did you search after I went? I think only Middlesbrough. I think Middlesbrough is the only other kit we looked at. We were complaining about Hummel kits generally. Uh, Matas gets it to Bartle, to Edmonds. On the left hand side and he gives it away to Griffiths. Liverpool 4-0 up, Liverpool looking confident. And this could be as many as they wanted to. As Benson Core puts it through. Simpson gets there. 
We've turned into hoofball, but that's a good one. Edmonds on the left, two in the middle. Edmonds into the box, finds McNeil. Dwight McNeil heads in. First Premier League goal of the season. And it is Liverpool 4, Burnley 1. And Dwight McNeil gets his moment. Uh, Trent is still playing. How old is he? Probably about 33 in here, I think. What are we, 10, 11, 12 years in? I can't even remember how many. When did we leave Burnley in the head coach? Is that nine years in? Might have even been later than that. I'll have a look in a second once this highlight's over. As Edmonds delivers it. He crosses to the back post. Griffiths hooks away. It falls for Coronel on the right. Alexander-Arnold is 32. So he's still got his fitness intact. So what are we there? Yeah, 11 years in. So we're not a huge amount into the future. And that's why all the real ones are still there. Artur, Bentoncourt. Few of them up there. Simpson gets the ball at the back. Flauhout to Bartle. Be nice if we could make this close. Give us a bit of confidence. A second goal wouldn't be going to miss here. As Edmonds goes alone, he might get it as well. Straight at Alisson Becker, who's in goal still. Plenty of the real players there. Tielemans playing for West Ham against Newcastle. Martinelli scored for the other side. Romano through again. Oh, it's blocked back to him. That's unlucky. Thankfully, it's gone wide at the post. It's not our morning though so far, is it? It's not gone particularly well. Three minutes of stoppage time added on. We need to hope that Balogun injury isn't bad because Lowry might not be fully fit by the next game. Griffiths in the box, heads against the bar. They're so much better than us. So much better. Craig, Wolves away kit. Let's have a quick look at that. Let's not even worry about Liverpool's chances. Oh, wow. That is colourful. Let's have a look. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you, Craig. And I know there will be a lot of people who like that as a modern kit. That's a FIFA kit for me. I absolutely hate it. That is made purely to be... You know like those when they started with the digital fourth kits, which we had a moan about? That reminds me of one of them. I mean, it, there's four colours on it for a start, which doesn't work. There's the or gold, the black, the white, and the, and the like blue, whatever you want to call it, sky blue. Then the badge is a different shade of gold. So that makes it five kits. It just, it's all over the place. It really is all over the place. We've been battered by Liverpool. So let's get back to that. Got to focus on football manager at some point. But the way we're going this season, we'll get sacked and we'll just be talking at the end. So L Gaming, what's the looting kit like? The home kit, I'm not a big fan of. It's got a new sponsor, which is, is okay. But the shade of orange is very close to red, which I'm not a fan of. Um, the away kit, I think, is brilliant. There's a lot of people who don't like it, but I think it's lovely. And the third kit is so-so. Looks like a training top, which Umbro is often guilty of. I've just seen a Celtic away kit, and it's light green. It showed up at the same time as the Wolves one in the search. But I can't quite work that out. How can you have a green home kit and a green away kit? Any takers on that question? Your home and away kit being the same colour does not make sense. Shopping has just come early doors. Let's hope mine isn't more than half an hour early or there will be a very abrupt end to this stream. But fingers crossed, they're not normally more than 10 minutes early. I have had the email to say no substitutions today, which is the first time since lockdown started there have been no subs in the shopping. I think in the height of it, there was one with, I think it might have been Tesco, where I ordered a full week shop and got 30 quid's worth of it. Which wasn't ideal, considering there's three of us in the household. But as it is, we've become a we've become fans of other supermarkets now. So we'll we'll have a vote next week. We'll see who's a favourite across the board, because during lockdown that has changed for me. Thank you to all the extra viewers creeping in. I'm presuming it's not the shopping talk that's doing that. We'll get back to football in a minute. Dwayne, welcome along. Good to have you in. It's lovely to see another regular in. If you are new along, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. If you're a regular, come and get involved in the chat. If you're a new one, come and say hello. And come and get involved in the football talk. Only a week and a half to go until the EFL season. A month until non-league. FA Cup ties further down non-league tonight. Has anyone got a game on their doorstep? Unfortunately, we haven't. Uh, Charlie Betts, welcome along. Good morning, sir. Lovely to have you back in after last week. Um, Carl Lawton, Ocado if it's payday. It's funny you should say that. Ocado, if it's payday for me today as well. We've got a, a saving scheme. Rather than going on holiday this year, we've saved up so we can get an Ocado once every three months. Now m has switched there. Because we used to go into m in town at the end of the week because they had all the yellow sticker deals on. 
but the MS closed in Luton. So unfortunately now, we haven't got access to it, which means we're going for the Ocado. 1st of September, MS is in, and we are happy bunnies. Uh, and I don't know why I've used that expression either. <clears throat> Ivan Tony to Brentford, Charlie. Interesting deal. The more interesting one for me, though, I mean, what it basically, they've sort of swapped styles of strikers, because that means Watkins will be on his way to the Premier League somewhere. If he hasn't gone already, I might have missed it. But the interesting thing for me is Tony has gone to Brentford. And he's the style of striker Peterborough had, obviously. Johnson Clark Harris has gone to Peterborough to replace Tony. Great business, but a very different type of striker. Probably more similar to Watkins. And I kind of feel for the quality of striker, I don't think Clark Harris is much worse than Tony. I know he's a bit older. But I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't have been shocked if Clark Harris had just gone to Brentford. It could have saved the nine million. But each to their own. Tony's a brilliant striker. He's someone I'd love to interview. He's got a great story. But yeah, a really interesting deal. Brentford will still lose some though. And that's why I'm holding off on my predictions. Because I had them for the playoffs last year. It was very close. But the next week will probably determine how it goes there. Uh, Chelsea will finish one or two in the league this season. I'm not so sure about that. I really don't know which way to predict Chelsea. Because I worry, last season they had a good settled side. They had all these brilliant youngsters coming through. And they're basically going to obliterate all of them out of the lineup. Werner will replace Abraham. Giroud was ahead of him. So what does Abraham do? Mason Mount is going to be behind Kai Havertz. They've already signed a couple of quality players. I know which, uh, William and Pedro have gone. But in the centre of midfield, it's getting a bit clogged as well. Will they sacrifice someone like a Ross Barkley, perhaps? Where does Ruben Loftin-Cheek go? He's going to drop down the order. A centre-half, Tamori, is he going to get a go? He was already behind Rudiger. He was already behind Zuma. Christensen's there. He doesn't seem to fancy him. He was a youngster. Um, and now Thiago Silva's coming. So, I, I don't know what to make of the Chelsea business. The only player they really needed at the start of the window is the keeper. And that's the one deal they haven't wrapped up. Because Mendy's still going, obviously. See, I'm not sure on that one. Fabio is going to have to play right back in this game. Balogun will be replaced by the returning Lowry. And physically, Harrett's going to be replaced by Mullen. Anything else in there? I think the rest of the 11's fit. So that's the lineup we're going for. Damage limitation again. So I'm actually going to be bold with Chelsea, Dwayne. I think they'll finish a bit lower this year. I think they're probably the candidates to miss out on the top four. But I'll predict them to go a long way in Europe. A real long way in Europe. Uh, L Gaming, England. Yes, you've pointed on something I want to mention there. England have a solid win against Pakistan. Milan and Morgan will be disappointed. Uh, uh, Ali will be disappointed, sorry. Um, well, I wanted to mention that. Firstly, brilliant this weekend to have England cricket back on the BBC. Or back on free TV. Whichever way, it doesn't matter what channel. But back on free TV was amazing. The coverage was good. Great to have Jimmy Anderson involved in it. And to be fair, the England bowling was bordering on very poor. But of course, they're missing key people. Stokes is a brilliant T20 bowler. They were missing Wokes probably would have been in there, if we're being honest, if it wasn't for the test team. And this short and summer splitting the teams up. But batting-wise, we look so strong in the short form. And we're even starting to improve in test cricket as well. Uh, Harrogate have a nice kit. Let me go and have a look at theirs. Home or away kit. Presume home kit. Uh, Harrogate kit. Let's have a look. Oh, that's for the 1920 season. Have they got a new one for this year? They must have going up to the Football League. Harrogate Town kit 2021. There we go. Let's get to the online store. I can't see Harrogate kits. Have they got a new one or is it last season's one? Because last season's one's a lovely kit, if not. Uh, Dwayne, Chelsea don't need a keeper. Uh, whether they do or not is up for debate. A keeper, I don't know. But they are signing one by the looks of it. That Mendy from Wren. And I guess the one thing I would say, last time Chelsea signed a keeper from Wren, it didn't go too badly, did it? So... I would imagine if they do sign him, it'll be first choice. And then you probably, for the. They're trying to balance the books, aren't they? Financial fair play. So I'd imagine 
I know half of that money would have been the Hazard money, but that's only really paying for Havertz once you take out Pulisic as well. So I would imagine they'll sell Kepa for 40, 50, 60 million. Keep Caballero as backup this year. So they've got to make the money back somewhere. I think Christensen will be sold because he doesn't seem to like him. I don't know what else you've got defensively. Marcus Alonso, maybe. Emerson, one of the two. I would imagine Alonso's the bigger earner and the bigger bigger draw for some clubs. Bartle over the top. Lowry's in here. Can we take the lead? Leon Lowry straight at the keeper. And I think the flag was up. I'm barely looking at the football manager. Uh, you needed the centre half, yeah. Thiago Silva's a good signing, even at his age. I think alongside Rudiker, first choice, he's brilliant. It gives you Zuma and Tomori as backups. But I would then be letting probably Christensen go. Unless they're going to go back three. I don't know. Uh, you can have a good squad, but they might not gel. Yeah, that's the question. You never know if you sign that many players if they're going to gel. Looks like United are getting Van der Beek at the top. Liverpool not really sign many, but I don't know. They probably only need one or two. They've got the backup fullback, which is something they did need. Don't know what they're going to do on the right. As Isik brings it down, looks like they're sticking with Nico Williams, who, to be fair, played all right in the community shield, so I wouldn't be too upset by that. City have signed well. They needed a centre-half. My only worry is they've got Ake and um, Laporte, so they're going to play two left-footers, but... I don't really know what the fuss with that is either because plenty of teams play with two right footers. Are they going to play a back three and have two of them involved? You don't know. Carl Walker is the third one maybe. Cancelo wing back. Who knows? Maybe even Ake as a left back at City. There's something that hasn't really been looked at with Mendy not playing much. Is I wouldn't be shocked if Ake becomes a first choice left back at Man City. It's the first thing I thought when they signed him. Ferran Torres, we know about from this Burnley save. He's going to be going as well to City and big money. Maybe he'll shine. But yeah, two really clever young signings for City. I think they've done all right this window. Tottenham, as I've mentioned at the start, signing well. Uh, Malang Sar, two for backup. Yeah, that's a good signing as well. But that's my thing with Chelsea. If you're not playing three at the back, you can't have six centre-halves. So, I don't know. Liverpool might sign Suarez. There's loads of rumours in it. I don't know. I mean, Liverpool fans and... The club would probably like him back. But I don't know if he's a Klopp signing. I mean, he improves that team. Suarez is probably the only style of player like Firmino that would improve that team. Because I know Firmino gets a hard time about his goal scoring. But he's not there for that. He's there to be the creative force with the two wingers scoring the goals. But Suarez, I could see fitting in there. It just depends on the price, doesn't it? And the wages. Charlie, you just found out that Jake Caprice has left Tranmere. I'm gutted. <laughs> He's one of your favourites, isn't he? He went to... Who was it he went to? Was it Newport, I'm thinking? I don't know why I've got that in my head. Is that from Football Manager, I'm thinking that? Where did Jake Caprice go? Let me have a look. Jake Caprice, who plays for Exeter. There we go. He's gone to Exeter City. That's a good signing for them as well. And after losing the playoff final, looks like they're having a bit of a regeneration. So... That might play into my League 2 predictions today. We'll see. That'll, of course, be released on the podcast over the weekend. Uh, let's see any others I've missed. I reckon Werner will be one of the top goal scorers. Potentially, yeah, he's a good player. I think he'll take one year to settle in, though. And I think the problem is with the Chelsea team, because they've got Giroud and Abraham as well, I think they'll rotate a bit more because they'll be trying to keep them all happy. I just I don't know if... It could go either way for Chelsea. They could be sublime or it could all implode. I just don't know. Depends who they sell, I guess, is the question. Uh, thoughts on Nacho Novo joining Step 5 Biggles Wage United? Interesting. Um, bit worried given his health history. A big draw, obviously, for them. They've been known for doing that in the past. And for us as a local side that we might well be going to vlog in the future, it's great to have a player of that stature there. Uh, L Gaming, I reckon the top four will be Liverpool, City, Chelsea and probably United, but I hope it's Arsenal. I think it might be a year too soon for Arsenal. I think they'll finish fifth, but I think they'll really go close for a competition as well. And that's the thing for Arteta at the moment. He's about staying in Europe and creating a winning mentality. So if he can win either the Europa League, the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup, in addition to already winning the Community Shield, I think that's a good season. If they go by February or March, they've won the Carabao Cup final. I'll say succeeded as long as they finish fifth. Best of the rest. 
But I really like what he's doing there. I just think with the new defence, it'll be one more year. One more year before they're right up there. 11 o'clock. Great to see so many of you coming in. Thanks for your support this morning. Please do get a thumbs up on the video if you haven't already. Come and get involved in the football chat down below. We talk everything from non-league to the top four, as you've seen. And we barely focus on football manager either. We've got a couple of games left this morning. Bournemouth, Leighton Orient in the cup and then City in the league. And we'll be off ready for the shopping to come. <laughs> Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne, at the end of last season, we played 3-4-3. Yeah, I think a lot of the teams seem to be going to a back three now, don't they? The problem is, they're all going to sort of overlap with each other. And it seems... I mean, you look at that United-Chelsea game. Take out the highest three clangers. They essentially matched each other up there and cancelled each other out. And if the Hayer wasn't throwing them in his net, there was barely a chance aside from that. So that's the one thing I worry about with every team playing the same tactic. We're keeping an eye out on these... Scout reports, but none of them are 18 or under, so we can't sign them. Flowerhouse wanted, Balogun is not, and Vinicius Xavier is not. So at the moment, only one might be leaving this window. It's probably the one we can't replace. If we go to the scout reports, actually, we'll have a quick look, because you mentioned about signings earlier in the stream. We've got 18 and under showing only. Let's see who the best of them are. So Almeria centre-half, Jose Henares. He looks pretty good. We'll get a scout report on him. Levante, false nine, Albert. Not good. Anyone else defensively? I'm trying to look for centre-halves here. Stephen Coffey from Dundee United. He's rated well. Let's have a look at him. Good player, actually. Not as good as the ones we've got, but a very good player nonetheless. But no real centre-halves. Louis Kane from United. He's very good. But whether we'll be able to get him, I don't know. We'll have a go at him, though, because that could be the solution. But let's go and have a look at the lineup for today. We will bring Callum Bonner back in. This time it's Fabio who's injured. Uh, defensively, we're running out of sub options, so signing one could be crucial. Fabio's going to have to stay on the bench. Jack Vaughan's poor, but I haven't got an option to replace him at the minute. And aside from that, I'm going to stick with the same lineup, I think. Don't fix it. If it's not broken. There's nothing better. So we'll stick with it. Mullen had a poor game in the number 10. Do we give Phil Richards a chance? He's the only one that hasn't really had a sniff this season. And he's played the best in Europe. So let's go Phil Richards. Aside from that. The same team. And we're at home to Bournemouth. Which we should be winning. Um, Arsenal are a one man team. Take Pierre out and they're nothing. Agreed to an extent. I think they're light up front. I think Lacazette can do a job. Not as good as Aubameyang. So Aubameyang's a 30 goal a season striker. If Lacazette plays every game, I think he gets 20 in all competitions. And Ketian, not good enough in my opinion. I know the Arsenal youngsters, they've got some brilliant ones there. The likes of Reese Nelson, the likes of Willock, the likes of Maitland-Niles obviously. Saka is the star of the bunch, but they probably need one more attacking player. But where do you get, it's the problem every club's had. Look at Tottenham behind Kane. I know they're going to sign Josh King this summer. Where do you get a good backup striker on the cheap? Because Arsenal haven't got big money to spend. They're not in a Champions League. And I don't know how you get one. So I think they rely on keeping Lacazette behind him. And then Nketiah to bang in a few in Europe. Perhaps that's what they go for. Quiet first half here. Not one highlight. I'm a little bit worried. And Jack Vaughan is in horrific form. And actually, it's happened since he's moved forward. So let's put him back on the wing. Because it seems to have affected us. Edmonds finds Vimmer, and we're going to try and get on the front foot. Uh, yeah, well, Gaming, he does have a point with Aubameyang. You've got to be fair. Uh, you're not an Arsenal fan. You just don't like United. Callum Wilson's a good backup, perhaps. The only thing you'd be worried about with him is injuries, because obviously he's had the same big injury twice, and they're hard to recover from. But if you can get him for the right price, and I'd imagine most of those Bournemouth players have a relegation release, if they could get Callum Wilson for a 15, 20 million, they could even knock the price off and do a swap deal and loan Nketia to Bournemouth if he's willing to go there. Something to think about. But yeah, I agree. Wilson's a really good option. But I don't know if he'd be happy to be third choice striker. That's my only issue. So if they got him, it'd probably be Lacazette they'd have to sell. What, the one thing I'm really surprised about, if I'm honest, of the top six, is that no one's gone in for Danny Ings. I know Liverpool obviously had him, he had the injuries, and that's why he moved on. 
but there are a lot of clubs that would benefit from him. I think Manchester United could benefit from him. I think Tottenham, he'd be the perfect player to go with Kane because they play a front two a lot. And we talk about these teams playing 3-5-2. Danny Ings could be a super signing for that. As Edmonds gets it from a poor clearance. Phil Richards is in. Finds Vaughan. This is the chance. Oh, Jack Vaughan. If you're confident, you score that. I'm so sure he scores that in confident form. Let's go and have a look at the tactical tweaks we can make. Substitutions to be done. So Vaughan will come off. Lowry will go to the right wing. Andy May up front. Oh, who else? Bartle replaced by Matas. And we're struggling after that. Edmonds is tired, so let's bring on McNeil. He'll go forward as a winger on attack. Lowry will be an inside forward on attack. And that is our tactic for the last 25. We just need to nick a goal from somewhere. Uh, Zeno, welcome along. Thanks for getting involved in the chat. I um, appreciate you joining in this morning. Dwayne, I like Kepper as a player. Yeah, I, he is a good goalkeeper. He's just got a few too many clangers in him. And we've had, I mean, Luton are a prime example of that as well, lower down. We've got Sluga, Croatian international, really good keeper, but just drops clangers. Um, but I think Kepa will improve. We've got more attacking now. We're pushing further forward here. And we're about to play against 10 men for the last few. So hopefully that will pay off for us. Let's see if we can get on the front foot. Uh, Zeno and Ketty are his first choice. No point getting Wilson. But that's the thing, Zeno. I don't know that Nketi is good enough to be first choice. I would argue, I don't know. And we've managed to get the goal as well. We are in front. Phil Richards has scored it. We'll go to positive. And it looks like Richards has nicked the number 10 spot. Um, but he isn't top six quality though. They will all go cheap because they're relegated. Yeah, that's the Bournemouth team. They're all, they're all in trouble, to be honest. Josh King's going to Spurs. If I was Arsenal, I'd sign him. I'd sign Wilson. But it's easier said than done, isn't it? I think it looks like they're on the verge of getting Caballos now. Oh, we've conceded. From absolutely nowhere, we've conceded to 10 men. That is arrogance personified. But yeah, it looks like Ceballos is going back, which will be a good sign-in. They've obviously got Gabriel pretty much wrapped up. Saliba looks like he's going to be involved this year. There's some good signs at Arsenal. Uh, do you think Norwich fullbacks will go? It looks like Jamal Lewis. He was linked with Leicester, wasn't he, and Liverpool. But then at Liverpool, he's going to be a backup. Andy May's offside there, so don't get too excited. He was linked with Leicester, but they look to have turned their, tie, turned their ties to, sorry, um, Castagno from Napoli. Even though he's naturally a right back. But then maybe James Justin goes over to the left. But yeah, I don't know. Who are the takers, really? The only other options for me, right back, I'd be looking. Newcastle could do with Max Ahrens, but I don't know they can afford him. Who else needs a right back? Doherty's gone to, maybe Wolves. Max Aaron's to Wolves is a good shout. Because they've obviously... They're giving up on Maitland-Niles by the looks of it. They've lost Doherty. Max Aaron's is the perfect replacement. I'll see, you know, I completely agree with that. And Ketia will improve. I'm not saying he won't be that quality eventually. But this season, when you're trying to get close to the top four or win a trophy in one of the others, is that the season you can afford to give a 20-year-old football? My argument would be get Wilson, loan him out. Wilson will have a sell-on fee in a year's time. You'll be able to get rid of him or Lacazette then, whichever. But obviously, they can't focus on what strikers they're going to sign and play until they've sorted out the problem with um, Aubameyang's contract. Wolves just love the Portuguese players. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me if they found a Portuguese fullback from somewhere, to be brutally honest. But I would be looking at Max Aarons if I was them, for my right wing back position. Vinagre on the left who's going to be a star for years. Oh, Dwayne, I agree with you. The the slate in Kepa gets is beyond his quality. The only things that surprise me for a top quality keeper is where he parries the ball. I mean, even in Sunday League football, I was taught not to parry the ball where he often does. And I don't know if that's a wrist strength issue. You'd imagine not at the top level. Whether it's a confidence thing, we saw in the early years with De Gea and again now. But he's got the ability to be a top keeper. I think that situation in the in the Carling, Carabao Cup final scarred him as well a year or two ago. I think he can be a very good keeper. He's got a he's got a negative connotation of his attitude because of that cup final. Um, but yeah, 
Well, that would be my plan, Zeno, to be honest, is for this year is to loan out Nketiah, get in football and get Wilson in. Then next summer, have Nketiah back, sell Lacazette, because he's got two years on the contract, so that'll be good timing next year. And then in a year's time, you've got what you would probably want longer term. But you've then got a higher quality striker at the moment for this season. And you'll have a higher quality in Ketia next year because he'll have played elsewhere. And there will be a fair few clubs that would take someone like him. Look at a Newcastle, for example. They could do worse than that. The clubs that are coming up. I know Fulham have got Mitrovic, but they haven't got anyone with him. Although Bobby Reid looks like he's there doing well, doesn't he? Uh, Nathan Mullen, we're not going to give him to you for no wages. Marcus Vinicius, we're not going to give him away either. We've got to keep them so they get homegrown at the club. But yeah, it's an interesting situation there. All it takes, and I think all this is proving, as the Matt Doherty one will, is that one transfer to a striker, and there will be six or seven to follow in weeks. So I'm really looking forward to see which one blinks first, because if it's one near the top, then there'll be a few more. Uh, you rate Pulisic a lot, El Game. Yeah, he's a really good player. But again, there's going to be a lot of players in that position, isn't there? Depends what formation Chelsea are playing. If they're playing that 4-3-3, three, three, then which one of Werner, Giroud and Abraham are you picking? And how is Abraham going to get football? If you are playing with two up front and no wide men, then how on earth do you get Pulisic in the team? Because he is really one of the only wingers left. Havertz can come in, can play 10 or on the wing. Mason Mount the same. There's quite a few that can do that sort of role. So I, I, I don't know. It really does. There's the one thing I see with Chelsea at the moment is what tactic are they going to play? If they play 4-3-3, then great, but they've got six centre-halves. So then they have to sell on one or two of those. And then you've only got one or three strikers that can play. I just don't know. There's there's so much that puzzles me about the Chelsea signings. And the same as United, actually, with Van der Beek. And then they're looking at saying if they can sign Thiago or someone else. Is Van der Beek is not the position they needed to improve. The reason they've signed Van der Beek is because he's available, in simple terms. So, there's a lot of clubs that are potentially doing that at the moment. Um, what do you think of Ivan Tony to Brentford? Yeah, we talked about this a little bit earlier. The, Tony will do well at Brentford. He's a good player. But Brentford will presumably now lose Watkins if they haven't already. I think they'll lose Ben Rama still. Someone will take a gamble on him. But the issue I have is that Johnson Clark Harris, who's gone to Peterborough, is more of a similar type of striker to Watkins. And so Peterborough haven't got the type of striker they had last year, and neither of Brentford. So I didn't really understand why Brentford didn't take the gamble on Clark Harris for an eight for the price. But either way, Tony's a great player, great striker, good story, and he'll do well. Uh, Dwayne, 3 4 3 would be a choice. Yeah, I could see that working, but again, then. With a 3-4-3, three, three, you have to get rid of one of the strikers, presumably. Because Giroud and Abraham are not going to be happy being third choice. And your £50 million signing is never going to be. So, it's interesting. It certainly is. We've signed our player, don't forget. Marco van der Heuvel, the left back. He's on under eight grand a week. And he's on a youth work permit. I was just about to say, he's going to solve our problem with Ruffman being away. But he's not. He's not at all because he won't sign a new deal. That's frustrating. We don't need to go to the press conference for that. He's only a backup player. Um, Zeno, I don't see Peterborough going up. It's so hard to tell. Johnson Clark Harris is a good signing, but you have to play a slightly different way with him up there. But the problem in League One is which other sides are competing. Because if you look at coming down, Charlton are making good signings, but they're still unrest off the pitch. Wigan have basically lost the whole squad and we have no idea how that's going to pay out. They may get a good owner by the end of September, sign 10 brilliant players and be up there again, but you don't know. So that's going to make things a bit more difficult. Hull, I don't think they're going to be up there. Sunderland, if ever there's going to be a year, this is it. Ipswich, will they build again? Pompey are going to be up there, you'd have th thought so anyway. I don't know. There's not as many competing with Peterborough. I'd argue League One is probably overall, in terms of strength and depth at the top, weaker than it's been for a few years. Because you look at the year we went up, the year before Luton, we had, obviously, Barnsley and Charlton who came up with us. You had Sunderland and Portsmouth in the playoffs. Peterborough were up there. 
there's some really good sides. There was a full six or seven. But I can only see three or four this year. Uh, Zeno, funny how everyone said Lampard plays the youngsters more, but as soon as he can buy players, he replaces all the youngsters. Well, that's the question for me, is where do the youngsters go now? Because it looks like, to me, they're trying to build another Galactico side, like they did in sort of the early Mourinho age. But, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of it. It's a strange old situation, to be honest. I just saw Fleetwood put in a loan bid for Whitehouse. I was just seeing if it was fully paying the wages. It's not. We'd probably like to loan him out, because he's not anywhere near the squad. It'd be good for us, but they can't afford the wages. So, no, no signing for him. Yeah, 3-5-2 potentially works for Chelsea again. But then with 3-5-2, you haven't got wingers. So that means that Pulisic has to play as the number 10. But then where does Havertz go? Mason Mount will be in the middle. I suppose he can play as a 2, but then he'd have to play a holding player. I just don't know. And that's the thing is no one really knows. We're not going to know until the season how the Chelsea one works out. It could be brilliant. It could be a disaster. For me, I'm erring more towards the side of disaster unfortunately. But what may happen is some of the mid-table Premier League teams might get some cracking players from Chelsea's squad. We've got an offer for Flauhout. That's not good enough. Why is his asking price 30 million? What on earth is happening there? No wonder the bids are so low. Let's make that unspecified. If we can get 50 or 60, we'll probably have to sell him because he's not homegrown. He's not the one that we need. But we're not selling him for 30. But the problem is, Zeno, you know, yes, he might have only played the youngsters because he had to, but they did really well. So why do you not give them a chance now? Players that have got you in the Champions League, the likes of Mount and James. Uh, I suppose James hasn't been replaced as such. Uh, Tamori. Uh, Abraham did brilliantly. He was chucked out towards the end of the season. As you look at that, and those players must be thinking, well, what on earth is going to happen to me next year? Am I going to end up back on loan to a mid-table team or... It puzzles me slightly, and it does worry me a bit. We've got Leighton Orient in a cup, but we've got a week off after. So I'd like to, if possible, play a strong team. We're going to bring Matas in alongside Bartle in the middle. A centre-half, Fabio's not fit, so he can't come in. I'm just trying to look at other positions. Richards is there. Mm, I don't think there's anywhere else we can make it stronger. So we're just going to stick with that lineup. Hopefully, against lower league opposition, we can blow them away with our first team. And it's not that Chelsea shouldn't have improved. I really believe that some of the signings are exceptional. I just think they've got a few too many just because they're available. And that's my only worry. And I'm, I hope I'm proven wrong because, Frank Lampard, it would be great to see a young English manager do well. Of course it would, as we've seen at so many levels. But I do worry about it. A long ball forward. Simpson heads away to Matas. Down to Bartle. Over the top. Should be a good start. Leon Lowry's in. He's shot straight at the keeper. Just having a few problems in front of goal there. Uh, they will most likely be sold within a few years or loaned out for all their career. You don't know. You just don't know. The good thing is, because they got that year of football at the top of the Premier League, is they'll get bigger clubs now. I mean, you see a Mason Mount or an Abraham becomes available. Someone will gamble. Someone big. And here's Lowry on the right. Chance to score. Edmund's in. And we're 1-0 up after three minutes. That should allow us to relax a bit here and not worry about the cup. Uh, Dwayne, three centre-backs, two midfielders, two wingers, one CAM, one striker. But if you have three centre midfielders, you've either got to have two holding midfielders or two wing backs, I guess. But then even then, with three centre-halves, you're possibly ruling out a Reese James. You're possibly ruling out Azpilicueta. I know he can play in the back three. Alonso and Emerson would have to be sold, of course. I just... I think that's the thing. The fact that none of us know means we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. Um, Wapos, welcome along. Good to see you here. There was too little depth in the squad. The youngsters will have to grow with them. It's a great test for them. Oh, I agree with that. There was a little too, de too little depth in the squad, sorry. But I feel like they've signed a few too many. I'm not arguing with them signing players. They needed to. But I'd argue that where they needed three or four, they're getting six, seven, eight potentially. Looks like even more perhaps. It's called Corin picks it up in the middle. But there will be outs. 
And that will be perhaps where the surprise is. To balance the books, they will have to sell three, four, five. And which ones they'll be is the surprise for us. Leon Lowry's in. He's hit the keeper again. We cannot get that goal at the moment. But I've got to say thank you so much to everyone who's made the chat so interactive. Bit of a slow start this morning with internet issues. And then, of course, with the fact that it's 10 a.m. on the Tuesday morning as well. But thank you so much for everyone coming along. If you haven't yet, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. We've got a big day on the channel today as we've conceded an equaliser. Oh, my words. Oh, my words. We've got the Champions League final coming up with Barcelona in the head coach at 4.30. If we win that, we've got a new series on the channel this Saturday. So, Leon Lowry's put another one wide. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Not going well at the moment, is it? But either way, we've got to get through here. That one's in via Lowry. Fourth time lucky for him in terms of chances. And it looks like we're going to be ahead now. It looks like we're going to get through in the FA Cup and we just have to stay on board with it. Leighton Orient did score with their only shot, but we've got to be worried about our defensive attributes. As Clark goes long downfield, Bartle intercepts to Matas. Out to the right to Vaughan. On the edge of the box, can take on his man. Goes back to Bonner. To Vaughan again. To Matas. Inside to Bartle. This is better. To Jack Vaughan. Falls for Richards. To Matas. To Vaughan. To Matas. It's all happening. Into Lowry and it's 3-1. Leon Lowry back amongst the goals. And we're through in the FA Cup. And in our penultimate game of the morning, this is exactly what we wanted. We can go and win the FA Cup. This, success, this series is a massive success. But we are playing a, back, a first choice team sorry, against League 2 opposition. We do need to bear that in mind. Before we get too excited anyway. Matas has nicked it high again. It's fallen for Lowry on a hat-trick. Scores a hat-trick. Brilliant goal, Lowry. And after injury troubles and a bit of a slow patch, he's back amongst the goals. El Gaming, I reckon they will sell or loan Christiansen, Abraham, Tamori and Emerson. So at left wing back, I think the one they'll get rid of is Alonso. Because he's going to be on more money and he's not really any different to Emerson. I think they'll rather keep him as the backup. Uh, Tamori, I think they'll keep. I think they'll get rid of Christensen. Lampard didn't really fancy him last year. Abraham, I don't know. But Abraham and Giroud, neither of them will be happy to be third choice. We've let in another goal. Jesus, what's happening defensively? I wouldn't be shocked yet if Giroud went. Because getting him on a new deal last year just means that he's, this summer he's going to be worth a bit of money. Do we go bold? Do Arsenal sign him back? Could potentially happen, couldn't it? Vaughan to Lowry. Oh, it's blocked off the line. We've got to have a look at this Smith who scored two for Orient. Can't finish to save his life, but he's quick. And somehow, we're falling foul to it. Yeah, I don't know which other players could leave Chelsea. Is Bakayoko still signed on, or did he go permanently last year? I am interested. I'm going to go and have a look at their squad, actually, to see what other players are in there that we've missed. Because there will be a few that potentially can go. It's not often we talk about the Premier League here. It's quite interesting to be talking something different. So on the books at the back, who have we missed? Oh, they've signed Chilwell as well, haven't they? I haven't even mentioned Chilwell. So yeah, definitely going to be Alonso going. And they are going to play with fullbacks or wingbacks then, aren't they? Richard scores a penalty, 5-2 to Burnley. So yeah, it's going to be... For me, the left back going will be probably... Mm, yeah, so Alonso. We've got Ethan Ampadu centre-half as well. So centre-halves, they've got Ampadu, Saar, Silva, Tamori, Christensen, Rudi, Kazuma. Seven. So that means they're going to be playing a back three, presumably. James and Azpilicueta are the right wing-backs. Emerson and Chilwell will be left wing-backs. That leaves left over. We will have Alonso... Christensen to go. Is Victor Moses still signed on at the club? He'll be off as well. Because they're all the little deals that make the money back for the club, aren't they? And the wages, more importantly. There's been a lot of talk about Jorginho. The son Ziyech as well. We didn't mention him. Zappa Costa. Jeez, drink water's there permanently as well. There's going to be a lot of outs to come. Bakioko is still on the books, apparently. Kennedy. Jeez, wasn't he at Newcastle a couple of years ago? I don't know what happened to him after that. So let's look at centre midfield. You've got Mason Mount, Kovacic, Barkley and Kante, Ziek, Jorginho, Loftus-Cheek. We're excluding Drinkwater and Bakayoko. We know they'll be going. So that's seven. 
Billy Gilmore, eight. So you've got to see at least two or three go in there, potentially. But which two or three will they be? Jorginho has been talked about a lot. So there's too much in that to not happen. After that, I don't know. Do they loan out lots of cheek? Do they sell Barkley? I, I genuinely don't know there. They're moving into the wide players. We've got Pulisic. We've got Hudson Adoy, who I forgot about as well. They're probably the only two at the minute. I know Ziek could potentially play out there. And Mount as well can potentially do that. Havertz will presumably join in that role. And then up front, you've got Verma, Werner, Abraham and Giroud. Michi Batshuayi still at the club as well. I mean, they've got to sell him too. So there's a lot of players to sell. They'll make their money back, no problem at all. Um, Gilmore out on loan, perhaps, yeah. If they can get a top championship or Premier League club to do it, then it's good value. But I can't see how many of the youngsters get into the team. That's the problem. I can sort of see the Gilmore out on loan, but he's this year where one, of the, one or two of the others were last year. But then Mount benefited from a year of championship football, so Gilmore might as well. Vaughan goes alone. Good save by Rossi. Let's make a couple of changes quickly. We'll get Nathan Mullen on for Matas. Bartle replaced by Harrop. And then Mullen can go number 10. In fact, which one's better out of them two at the 10? Mullen's better in the holding role. So we'll get him back there. Andy May for Lowry, who got his hat-trick. We'll just rest him for the last few. And we'll try and see this out. 5-2 with 10 to go. I rated Bakayoko a lot. I think he still goes on loan. He was a good player before he joined Chelsea. Just, it didn't work out for him. I hope Ampadu leaves because I don't think he'll play and he'll be a key part of Wales' future. He's, he's a good player. He was playing at the top end of the Bundesliga last year. I'm trying to look. I mean, if he was leaving, I'd be looking at somewhere like Arsenal thinking they could do worse than him. He's the natural replacement, hair aside, for David Luiz. Plays out from the back. Could play in the holding role as well. I mean, he's a really good player. But Chelsea aren't going to sell him to a rival. Uh, yeah, Gilmore out on loan is probably the most likely. Um, I hate Juve. Why did they sack Sari? Probably the same reason as Chelsea, to be honest. It's player unrest. He did a decent job at both, but neither of them like him. I would say Juve were run very close in the league this year. They haven't replaced their midfield, which is a problem. And I think Perlo's going to have to enforce that. I don't know, though. It seemed like it wasn't all too happy there. They ran out of the Champions League to Lyon, but then Manchester City did that and Pep didn't get sacked. So, I don't know. But I can kind of see it because it seems off the pitch things aren't happy. Uh, poor Ajax, all their good players left. They're good. Yeah, but that's been that's the case with lower lower coefficient leagues, unfortunately. The same happens with Portugal. You think all of the players from the best Portuguese teams are going to Wolves. So... And that was when they were in the championship. They signed Neves. So it's interesting. But unfortunately for the countries like Holland and Portugal, there's not a route back up now. Because if they'd been able to hold on to that squad for a year or two, they might have dragged them back up. But then you're waiting for the other clubs to improve, them to do well in Europe. And it's a longer waiting game than many players are going to. Yeah, that was the thing. Sorry, was going to sign Jorginho. And maybe with Chelsea signings, were they banking on that perhaps? Because where will he go now? I don't know. But sorry, we'll probably get another job. And if it's a big job, they can sign him. We've got one more game this morning. It's Manchester City away. They're in sixth. It's going to be a tough one. We've got the FA Cup draw as well in between. Uh, yeah, they've signed Arthur. He's a really good player. Juve signed him because they wanted more exciting football. It didn't really happen. They only just managed to win the Serie A title. Yeah, the Serie A title, sorry. Off the pitch stuff. Yeah, it seemed to be more that the star players weren't fans of him. Um, Artel's a really good signing as well. Will revolutionise that midfield. Let's crack ahead. We need to get to this FA Cup draw. Your head's picked up a knock. Some of the youngsters struggling now. And hopefully, we'll be able to get a good draw again. The last thing we want is a Premier League side away. So let's hope we can get another League 2 one at home. And then get through to the fifth round. I just want to win a trophy with this save. Doesn't matter how we do it. We could have done with avoiding the Carabao Cup embarrassment. But I don't know that we'll make it in the Europa League too. We could have probably got better there. 
Red Star's not a bad draw, but there are some good sides left, as you've seen. Looking at that draw, Sporting are there, Lille. There's good sides to swallow from Italy. Hernandez removed from the transfer list. Didn't I just ask to scout him? Bartles picked up a knock as well. That scout report is yesterday. 3.9 million, eight grand a week. Centre half, two and a half star ability. We've got to go for him. That's a great deal. 18 year old. So yes, perhaps we will be signing someone this window. Might not go through today though. Now we've got to remember to give him eight grand a week. Otherwise we're going to be in trouble with the work permits again. He probably wants more to be fair. He doesn't. So he's going to be on eight grand a week. Let's get that one done now. And the rest of it, we can probably drag down a little bit. Because he's not going to be, he's going to be earning a lot more than he thought he was. Let's put it that way. Let's go for that. Yep, happy with that. Eight grand a week. And it will be Miguel Hanares, who is coming in from Almeria. And now we've got the fourth round draw of the FA Cup. Let's have a quick look at the chat. It's half 11 already now. Are you uh, joking? They've bought in Weston Kenny on loan as well for next year. Very interesting talent, that is. It is an interesting one, actually. Uh, what's your answer to my question about the favourite save? Oh, that's tough. Let's see who we get in the fourth round. We have got Barnsley or West Ham away. So, potentially Premier League opposition. That is not good. But let's get to this last game against City, who have just won their FA Cup game. And then, hopefully, we'll be done in time for the shopping. Look who scored Hull's goal there. Keen Lewis Potter. Bit of a hero in the Macclesfield weekend save we started. I've got to say, your support with that's been incredible as well. It's gone far better than I could have expected. And I hope the new one that's potentially coming this Saturday will be the same. We've had an offer to know Nathan Mullen, but I can't do it because he needs to be homegrown at the club. An offer for Balogun, which isn't good enough. And I'm just going to take that asking price off entirely now. See what sort of offer we can get for him. Uh, we've got matches picked for TV. Hanares looks like he's coming in. Five-star potential. And all is going well in the world at the moment. But that will probably be ruined when we face City away. Balogun wants to get his move. If we get a good offer, we'll let you go, sir. I can assure you of that. And let's just tell him he's going nowhere. But of course, he's going to be unhappy. He'll tell PSG and they'll offer a bit more money. Fingers crossed. Favourite save? Yes, that's an interesting question. Let's see what one we come up with. I mean, I've got a feeling it's going to be potentially the Northern Irish one that's soon to start. I've nearly recorded a season of that and I'm loving it. The Macclesfield ones had more emotion, ups and downs in it. The head coach. I find it hard with the two FM20 long-term ones because the start of FM20, as I've said before, is when I feel I was making my worst content. So it's hard to have enjoyed them as much. But... I have liked the journey of the head coach this year. Dorkin, possibly just as it stands at the moment, or this Burnley one. I'd say, if you ask me now, I'd say probably just about Dorkin, because I always prefer the one club stories. But I think it will be the Northern Irish one that's hopefully starting on Saturday, providing we win today. Thank you to all the extra viewers coming in. I think we might be at an all-time record high for number of viewers at the moment. So thank you so much for your support. If you haven't yet, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. I really do appreciate it. And come and get involved in the chat. Craig wants to mention the Barnet save again. I'm trying to forget that, Craig. What I will say is the Barnet save, you did very well with Chesterfield. And it does feature the only and the best montage on the channel, which was the, the disappointing end to the season. But yes, you did a good job with Chesterfield and you made me look a little bit silly. We're one day away and we've got our final game. And hopefully... We won't be interrupted by the shopping. Um, I enjoyed watching the Barnet save. I love network saves. So do I, to be honest. It's something that if Craig is happy to, we'll do again next year. So Craig, are you up for an FM21 network save? And I tell you what, based on the squads at the moment, how do you feel about Wrexham, Notts County? Wrexham, Chester... I suppose you could stick with Chesterfield, couldn't you? You could do it again. If we want to make it even. I guess it will depend on the squads at the time, but... Based on the Wrexham signings, to be honest, I actually quite fancy them at the moment. And I'm not just saying that for UL Gaming. I do really like the look of their signings. But I'm trying to think who else it could be. Potentially Macclesfield, but that would probably be too unfair on the other person. Stockport, another side at that level I really like. That's a team we could potentially get on board with. 
I'm not quite sure. We'll have a little look around. And obviously when the new game comes out, sometimes you get shocks, sometimes you get positives and negatives. We've got York staying down in the National League North. We could do something down there. There's some big sides at that level this year. Fylde went down as well, didn't they? Could do Fylde and York. Let me know, Craig, if any of my suggestions are, are tickling your fancy so far. Okay, it was a bottle job on that. It was. I tell you what, this... I tell you, FM20 on this channel has just been a story of penalty shootouts. And many of them have not gone favourably. Probably this year with Barcelona in the head coach is the first time they've really started working out in the positive. So we've got Manchester City today. It is going to be the final game of the day. And then we are going to rush off so we can get the, the shopping slot between 12 and 1. Fingers crossed it won't come too early. So I will focus on Football Manager for a minute while we pick our team. Just to make sure we finish up in time. As that's always, we've overrun because we've been talking football galore this morning. And that is something I will never be complaining about. But let's get into the game. It is Manchester City v Burnley. It's going to be a tough finish to the morning. We'll get a couple of the stars back in. I think we can get Garner back on the bench. He will replace Ross Marsh. Just to give us more defensive options. Vinicius Xavier in for Matas. Bartle back to his Mazzala role. And Jack Vaughan will stay on the right because I don't have another option. But that's the lineup we're going for. Let's see how we get on. Will it be damage limitation again? Craig, you might have hit the nail on the head. Let's go local. St. Auburn's Hemel works. However, because of my experience at the start of FM19 with Hemel and the fact that a couple of their fans didn't like my uh, moves there at all, I might have to be St. Auburn's out of the two, despite Hemel being probably my preferred side. Uh, Rexman Stockport maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of options. I guess in terms of locality, St. Auburn's and Hemel is a good move. But I guess, Craig, we also have to think about... Um, viewership clubs that are well supported so i guess but then probably someone's doing knots county already so we'll wait and see if any of the big youtubers go for some of the sides it will wipe them out for us but St Albans hemel is one that i'd like to do as city fire over the bar we dropped a balanced we're holding on after 15 craig wrexham and stockport done you don't know how similar they're going to be yet but, but you'd have to be wrexham craig because i'm not having a stockport save and not being stockport I have managed Stockport on the channel before, actually. It was one of the first saves I ever did. It's like one of the FM Touch challenges with the Golden Generation. It was really interesting, actually. Uh, this is the first time I catch you live. Only recently started getting into FM, but already an addict. It's a, it's a very easy game to become an addict at, as we fall one behind from the spot. The story of the penalties again. I appreciate you coming and joining me, Wapos. That's the main thing. I appreciate you coming along this morning, coming and getting involved in the chat. There's so many good streamers and content creators. And to be honest, you learn a lot as well because everyone does it differently. I'll never claim on videos to be the best storyteller, the best actor or any of that sort of stuff. But I, I love football and I can talk about everything from lower non-league to the Premier League, which is probably my selling point rather than my creativity and my uniqueness, to be honest. Uh, and that's why the football podcast came about as well, because we love talking football, particularly lower leagues. So that's always a big positive for us. Uh, Craig, yes, you can be Wrexham. So L Gaming, you don't have to worry about me bottling Wrexham because Craig's going to take charge. And that will probably work better for you, because as you've seen in all of the saves, I'm a wheeler dealer. And Craig will keep your squad intact at least. And I'll turn Stockport into an unrecognisable team. As they pick it up on the right city here, nearly 2-0 at half-time. And I think it will be, to be honest. As that switched over, Hallux, who scored the penalty, into the box towards Kiss, headed away. And we are clinging on for dear life. How it's 1-0, I don't know. But it might change here. Zakharov into Hallow. He shoots, hits the post. Jeez, how are we holding on? Dwayne, let's have a look at your Chelsea team there. Uh, Whopper's enjoying the stream so far. I'll definitely try to be here more often. Oh, that's very kind words. Appreciate it. Every Tuesday morning we're live. We never do the longest ones in the world. So, Dwayne, your Chelsea team. Kepper or Caballero, yep. Yeah. Christensen, Silva, Zappa, Costa, Reese, Baba, Tamori. I forgot about him, yet. Yeah. Chilwell, Saar and Pardu, Azpilicueta, Alonso. This is goalkeepers and centre-back. That's the thing. For the goalkeeper and back five... We've got to get rid of probably one of the left backs. You missed Emerson there. That's the only other one. 
Although I suppose if you're saying for centre back, perhaps then yeah. But I think Chilwell Alonso will play wing back. Um, I'll be supporting Craig in that. Sorry if he's Wrexham. Ah, that's all right. I forgive you for that one. To be honest, it's probably better me not having the pressure because you've seen me bottle it when I did. And to be fair, when we played the fantasy draft, I absolutely embarrassed Craig. And then when it came to the one that mattered, it all went wrong. Bartle switches it to the right to Vaughan. Gets in behind. He could level it up here. We don't deserve it, but he's shot straight at a keeper. Another one of our heroes, Gregory Bernardo. We've obviously got a Barcelona in the alternate universe. He will be featuring in that Champions League final at 4.30 today. And he could be the man that gives us a new series to start this weekend. Hour on the clock. It's going to be two here. Crossed in from the right by Ernesto. He gets it to the back post. Kiss heads against the line. And it's out to Hallow. Cleared away as far as Vaughan who will bring it away. Xavier is going to be replaced by Matas. He'll switch over there. Richards replaced by Nathan Mullen or Ashley Harrop. And then at right back we're going to give Bonner a rest. He's played a lot since he came back to fitness. So Fabio will come on for him. And also, Craig, I have an answer to what you asked me a few weeks ago. I think Wrexham will be in the top seven. To be honest, based on the signing so far, it looks good. Timo can play off the left or right. Yeah, I mean, they would have had to have agreed that with him before. Because he wouldn't have signed for 50 million as a striker if he was then going to be flogged out wide. So he would have had to have known. As Paolo gets it back into Ruben. But honestly, it could go completely the other way. Chelsea could be brilliant this year. But I'm really interested to see who they let go over the next few weeks. Because as we come to the end of the window, there'll be a lot of clubs desperate for a cheap bargain or a cheap backup. Particularly if fans start to come back in in October. There'll then be a little bit more freedom on that front. But none of us really know how the next month will go. As Fabio gets it into Simpson. As centre-half switches across to Flauhout. Can we at least nick a goal? Because to be honest, it would be lovely to nick a point in a game like this where we've been absolutely outplayed. As Fabio gets it inside, we're not going forward too quickly. And the highlights are taking a long time, which is a worry with the shopping just 15 minutes away. As it's out to Edmonds on the left. This could be the moment. Edmonds in. Lowry's there. Lowry gets the rebound in. Leon Lowry makes it one all. And with 15 to go, we are back on terms with City. That is unexpected to say the least. Thank you to everyone that's coming in. A record high we reached today for number of concurrent viewers. And we've had loads of playbacks as well. If you haven't yet, please chuck a thumbs up on it and keep getting involved in the chat. It'd be lovely to see you here. We do these live streams every Tuesday morning at 10am. And I'm really having a great time. It's lovely to talk football, to talk to the people that have helped make this channel a success for me. And I really do appreciate it. I won't be taking it for granted. But City are playing out from the back and they're trying to nick a winner here. And based on the schedule of play, it wouldn't really shock us. Uh, hopefully you don't lose it on pen so it can be a long network save if Wrexham's in it. Well, I tell you what, if we can pre-record it, me and Craig, we could do it as our Christmas special over the week. Get it recorded out, but it depends how close to it FM's released this year. Because it is going to come out a bit later, I think. But we are holding on here, and we're starting to create more chances. So things are looking good. And as it stands, we're going to finish in 12th, 8 points clear of relegation, and 8 points or 10 points off Europe. So a good result, a very good performance, and a good way to end the day. So we're in decent form. And we've got some more friendly games coming up in the next few weeks. So we've got Newcastle at home in midweek. Then Brentford away. Leicester at home. FA Cup tie. And a pretty friendly February as well. So up until Chelsea on the 8th of March. We need to be winning most of those games. So that's where we finish at the moment. The next episode will be crucial. The FA Cup 4th round. The first leg of the Europa League 2 quarter, quarter final. Knockout round sorry. So we'll wait and see how that pans out. Why Chelsea finished four is because of for back. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the Chelsea side's going to be decent this year. It's just whether there's a few too many. But I really have enjoyed the football chat this morning. Everything from sort of lower non-league up to the top four. It's great to talk football, transfers and all sorts. And that's what this stream was about. It was about the community more than the FM. So the FM's finished on a high. The chat has been brilliant all morning. Uh, L Gaming, thanks a lot for the server. Appreciate that. We will get the Discord up and running over the next week. And I really do appreciate you coming along this morning. Hopefully the internet's held up towards the end. And we've timed it brilliantly because the van's just pulling up now. So thank you for coming along this morning. I'm going to go off and enjoy putting the shopping away. Sarcastically.
and thank you for joining me this morning. I hope to see you next week. Thanks for coming along.